New police footage revealing interviews with NMSU heads and assistant coaches right after the fatal shooting in Albuquerque involving New Mexico State basketball player Mike Peake and a University of New Mexico student. Good evening, I'm Carla Draxler and thank you so much for joining us. We're also finding out three NMSU players who reportedly assisted Peake have been suspended from tonight's game. Last night, we showed you moments of leaning up to the shooting. You can see Mike Peake and the 17-year-old girl who police allege conspired with UNM student Brandon Travis and two other men. There, then you see the three men run up from behind. The new footage showing Brandon Travis pointing a gun at Peak and another suspect hitting Peak with a bat. Peak then runs, and we see Travis pointing a gun towards Peak and Peak pulling his gun. That's when shots were fired and Travis was killed as a result. Peak continues to run with a gunshot wound in his leg. Crossing the street, and just a few moments later, a yellow Camaro shows up reportedly with three NMSU players who assisted Peak. According to the police report, Peak put the gun and his tablet into the vehicle that drove off. Now, the gun was eventually given to authorities by assistant coach Dominique Taylor after the three NMSU players told head coach Greg Heyer that it was in a room at the hotel. But that was all after the Aggies team bus had already left to return home to Los Cruces. The bus was stopped along I-25 and Peak's tablet was retrieved from it. New Mexico State head coach Greg Heyer and associate head coach Dominique Taylor were interviewed by police in the hours after the shooting and the gravity of the situation quickly hit them both. I'm just shaking. I'm just sick to my stomach. I'm just so, this is so t terrible and disappointing. Right now we have Michael in the hospital with a gunshot wound. Um, there's a deceased UNM student. Um, I don't think he's an athlete, but he's, he's a UNM student, deceased. Um, this is just some of almost seven hours of footage obtained by KTSM today. We're currently in the process of reviewing all of it, including interviews with some of the suspects in the case. And since that shooting on November 19, the New Mexico State men's basketball team has continued to play games. Mike Peak was suspended indefinitely on Monday, and just today, multiple other players have been suspended. KTSM 9 Sports reporter Sam Guzman joins us live in the studio with more. Good evening, Sam. Thank you, Carla. Well, tonight, New Mexico State played their fifth game since the November 19th incident on the road at Santa Clara. For the first time, NMSU publicly disciplined Issa Muhammad, Marcellus Avery, and Anthony Roy as they all served a one-game suspension during the team's game against Santa Clara tonight. Muhammad and Avery were on the bench in street clothes. Roy is still back in Las Cruces and did not make the trip. No coaches were suspended for tonight's game. This, of course, comes as a result of the ongoing in investigation. As we just told you, Avery, Muhammad, and Roy are seen on surveillance footage getting out of the yellow Camaro that Peak allegedly put the gun and tablet in. But we want to take you back to November 21st, two days after the shooting, and to a question and answer form NMSU sent to the media. In that Q&A form, the school was asked if any other students were out of the hotel that evening. The university re replied, quote, yes, we have become aware of other student athletes who have violated NMSU team curfew rules. Those student athletes were not part of this incident, end quote. However, as we have seen from the surveillance footage and learned from police investigations, Muhammad Roy and Avery were there. Take a look at this portion of the interview police conducted with associate head coach Dominic Taylor hours after the shooting. The officer makes it very clear they know those three players were present following the shooting. They know what happened. Yeah. Well, because they met with Mike. Mm -hmm. So these kids, you know, they talk. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be like, you know, Mike's not going to tell them right. anything. So I know they know what happened. And they know who was driving that Camaro because they were in the vehicle. Right. And so we know that there's a gun now floating around. Whether they have it or not, I don't know, or if it's still in the Camaro. I know Coach Air is checking with your guys' AD as far as me speaking yep. to those players. Okay. Um, because he doesn't know, like, do they need a lawyer or what. Right. And so, you know, he's trying to protect them, which is that's fine. 
As of right now, it is still unknown who was driving the Camaro and if police have ever interviewed those three players who did choose to exercise their right to an attorney. We reached out to New Mexico State University regarding their initial comments about the involvement of other athletes that night, and this is what the school said, quote, that statement should have been more clearly written and then should have either been taken down or rewritten as additional information was learned. That was not part of this incident. Uh, was intended to reference Mike Peake sneaking out of his room to meet a girl and then encountering those three men with a bat and gun. The other athletes were not part of that incident. Now, as it has been widely reported, those athletes appear to have shown up later and interacted with Mike. We've debated eternally whether or not to take down that page as information becomes old, but we were also trying to avoid someone saying, why is it no longer available, end quote. New Mexico State Chancellor Dan Ar Arvizio said in a statement yesterday that some of the information that has been reported by the media about these players, NMSU itself has not yet received as of Tuesday. Additionally, KTSM learned on Wednesday that the Bernalillo County District Attorney is working with New Mexico State Police to investigate NMSU staff and players following the shooting on the UNM campus. Carla.